I am Christy Oliver, the Professional Development Manager at Davis Publications. Thanks, thank you all for joining us today. We are thrilled to be here with you. Joining me today is Julian Davis Wade, the President and Publisher of Davis Publications and School Arts Magazine. For those of you who aren't familiar, since 1901, Davis has held strong to the belief that all K-12 students deserve a quality art education. This is why we are committed to providing superior art curriculum, engaging studio lessons, and valuable advocacy and classroom resources. In support of this principle, the vision we have is simple. Honor our history and continue our unique tradition of providing superior education resources that support art educators, inspire students and engage them in learning, elevate the importance of creativity, and advocate for a brighter future. Our session today will cover the free resources Davis has available for your use. We'll address some of the frequently asked questions we encounter when engaging with art teachers, and at the end of the session, we'll have some time to address any additional questions you may have. Julian, can you tell us how Davis supports teachers? Christy, absolutely. So since 1901, School Arts has been supporting art educators uh, with lessons, advocacy uh, through uh, the K-12 uh, spectrum. So School Arts really came out of the fact that there was an art education standard that was released in Massachusetts in 1901. Uh, so there was a standard, there were art teachers, but there weren't, uh, there weren't really any materials or resources to assist those teachers in implementing those standards in, in their classroom. So that's what School Arts was born out of, a, a real need of quality content uh, and resources uh, for art education uh, practitioners in that time. That mission and philosophy that started School Arts and really Davis Publications in 1901 is still what carries through to today and what we reflect in our current publications, even 120 years later. So that is, that's, you know, even our free resources that we've put up right now, uh, I think still reflect on that mission. So with School Arts, you know, really the, it's by art educators for art educators. That's always been how it's been developed and written. So the publication staff, while we do have our editors and our, you know, all of the people who have to make the mechanics of the magazine happen, uh, the, those who are crafting and inputting the content and therefore what's distributed out to, to the other art educators is by your peers and contemporaries uh, and sometimes your colleagues. And that is what really makes School Arts and Davis, I think, a very special place because it is the voice and the platform uh, for, for all of these educators. Can you tell us how art teachers can get published in School Arts Magazine? Oh, absolutely. So I definitely recommend checking out schoolarts.com. There's a get published page over there. That just that page alone has tons of resources that you can check out for if you're thinking about writing an article, if you're thinking about contributing, how do you go about doing it? What are the formats? You know, what are we looking for? What kind of topics are we looking for? Uh, so there's a ton of information on that web page. We also have a wonderful and responsive staff that if you have any questions about how to write or editing or ideas or anything like that. They are a wonderful resource that you know, everyone's always excited when we get to hear from, from our school arts base, especially when you wanna to write too. So those are, those are some great tools and methods to, to be able to write for school arts and get involved. Great. What other free resources do we have to offer? Ooh, so, as I mentioned before, we've, we've put out uh, a fair amount of free resources uh, just in the past three months, given all of the unique uh, changes and adaptations that teachers and everyone have really had to go through. Uh, so some of the things that I'm most excited about, so we started putting on this weekly webinar series, which I myself have really been enjoying. I have learned a lot about our products, about our authors, about artworks that are featured in it that otherwise I wouldn't have been able to, just given the format uh, and the conversations and presentations that the authors and artists that uh, we've been featuring have been able to talk about. So I have really enjoyed them. I have to confess, I wish that they had been in production when I was in customer service. It would have made my product training a lot easier. Uh, so they have been great. Uh, but Christy, would you like to talk a little bit more about them? You, you have really been the one uh, who has been working hard to put these on. Sure. Um, so as Julian mentioned, we tried really hard to listen to the needs of the teachers right now and to provide webinars in, on content that 
is timely and meaningful for you all. There's 11 free sessions on a variety of topics. Each session is about one hour long and has a presentation component followed by a taped Q&A. Um, you can watch them for free anytime. And there's also resources, handouts, downloads that you can use right now with your classes. We really tried to respond um, again, to your needs. For example, we held a session with Dr. Lisa Kay on teacher self-care using the Visual Notes Project. We also engaged NAEA leaders in supervision to host a roundtable that provided art supervisors from around the country a forum to discuss the struggles that they were experiencing and also to offer support for each other as we all navigate the difficulties of teaching art during a pandemic. And just this week, we held a session on mindfulness where we provided an overview of what mindfulness is and how it can be used in the art classroom while walking people through techniques that can be used in your classroom or in virtual learning environments. And I think we could all use a little calm and pause for um, right now to keep us all stress-free and happy. So these are just some snapshots of the kind of content we can offer for professional development. We also have three complimentary sessions in addition to the weekly webinars. Um, the topics of those include foundations and intersections of art therapy and art education, creating collaborative art using picto tape, and funding through the arts, which also includes grant planning. So really great, exciting topics. Um, otherwise, we have lots of topics that we can explore in a variety of formats for professional development. The length of time and the way that it's delivered, we can modify to meet your specific needs. We can do face-to-face -face when that makes sense. We can also do over Zoom or a hybrid kind of situation. We can also provide on-demand for individuals or um, something else that meets the needs of your district. Um, some of the topics include differentiated instruction, meeting the needs of English learners in the art classroom, adaptive art, therapeutic approaches in art education, social emotional learning, media arts, choice-based art education, embedding contemporary art in your curriculum, and many, many more. I think one of the great things about being able to craft professional development in the way that we are is that we can meet the specific needs of the districts. So if your district has an initiative, we can work with you to figure out the best way to do that in and through the arts so that it's meaningful professional development for you while also meeting the needs of the district. So I think that's really great. We all want it to be something that is super worthy of our time, but also like rich in content and exciting to be a part of. Um, Julian, can you tell us why you felt it was important for Davis to provide professional development? Absolutely. So, you know, for we've been producing art education content for a very long time, which has always involved listening to the teachers uh, at the core of that and listening to what they need, what materials they're asking for, what formats they're asking for, what, what, what they really need in terms of help. And professional development is, has been a big piece that we have uh, been hearing for a very long time. So it's, it's been something that's been on our mind and we've been working towards for, 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 a, for a long time. And, uh, but now we're finally at the point, especially with you, Christy, uh, being on board where we are able to craft and put together uh, these professional development programs, you know, and certainly having quick, easy access to research backed professional development that is relevant to the topics that teachers really need right now and to what they're working on or what they're struggling with at the moment in, in their classrooms. And by working with the professionals and your contemporaries and your peers who can give you that great advice and, and give you some of that structure. So it's a really exciting format for us uh, in order for us to be able to continue to put out really helpful quality content in ways that is really helpful and meaningful to teachers. Great. In terms of instructional resources, can you talk about the ways we support art educators with our programs? Absolutely. Uh, so, you know, on our, on our free resources page right now, uh, which I highly recommend people check out, we have access to uh, K-12 lessons. There is a 90-day sample that you can sign up for. Uh, on our Davis Digital site, we have some wonderful on-demand video lessons that we have pulled from our curriculum, uh, some of our curriculum on Davis Digital, 
There's also lots of free lessons and free articles on that page as well. Uh, but back to the 90 day uh, sample, if you do sign up for that, uh, not only will you be sampling the content, all of the K-12 content that Davis has to offer, uh, but you will also be sampling our Davis Digital platform. Uh, so Davis Digital is the platform uh, that Davis Publications built in order to uh, host and deliver all of our digital content curriculum and resources. So from our digital books to over 35,000 fine art images that we've paired with museums across the country, across the world, uh, to bring to you and, uh, and never mind having access to the monthly update of School Arts Magazine, Digital School Arts, uh, and tools like our Portfolio Builder and our Curriculum Builder. The Curriculum Builder is a wonderful tool that we have put together where you can take the Davis content, search through that, uh, and combine it with the lesson plans that you have worked so hard to create over your many years of teaching and be able to combine them together where you can embellish with our images, with different lessons, with other ideas and artists, uh, but not have to completely redo your, your own lesson plan and then you can export it as a PDF. Uh, so it's a, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty robust platform that we've built and we've really designed it by, once again, how we work uh, with our curriculum, this was how the platform was built as well, by working with art teachers, by working with the practitioners, listening to them, updating it, and trying to make the best platform for real art educators. Great. And is there any alignment in the textbooks with standards? That's a great question. So we are aligned to all national standards and all state standards where applicable. Great, that's gonna be super helpful for teachers. How do the books reflect the diversity of today's students? So Davis, at the core of our mission is to make sure that the materials that students are using are reflective of the students who are using them. So that means that we have diverse uh, artists uh, and diverse authors in our groups. That means that all of our lessons are built on big ideas and universal concepts. Uh, and it also means that we feature lots and lots of student artwork so that students can see works of art uh, and in the, in the final result of their peers and contemporaries working through these same uh, open-ended, not problems, but you know, uh, experiences that have been put in front of them. Uh, so, and that's a really great way for students to be able to conceptualize, to see themselves, and to be able to plan and, and really have a, a great experience with art education. One of my favorite examples is in our text, Exploring Visual Design, there is a really nice feature on Wiley, who is probably most known for creating the official presidential portrait of Barack Obama. Here you can see a painting he created during his high school years. And for me, this is a great way for students to relate to famous artists while recognizing that famous artists also went to high school and not only that, but they took art classes and made awesome paintings. So just like them. So it really takes the experience and makes it relatable in a way that students can see. Um, overall, we have a lot of student artwork throughout all of our texts, and I think it's just really nice to see real artwork made by real students, um, facilitated by teachers who are actually teaching these lessons today. Um, some of the books even have whole galleries of student work, which is intended to help teachers and students with setting expectations that are developmentally appropriate, but also for, for peer critique. So um, is there anything else Davis does that teachers should know about? I think there's lots of other things that Davis does that teachers should know about, but I won't go into all of them right now. I highly recommend you head over to davisart.com and check out all the stuff that we have there. Uh, but some of the highlights that I will call out, I think are probably the most uh, helpful right now, are art education and practice series, our AEP series. Uh, which really highlights the philosophy and fundamentals of why we why art is taught the way that it's taught and where that came from uh, who, who and whom thought of that uh, and the practice and theory behind that uh, so those, that's a great series we also have a lot of resource books uh, including our school arts collection uh, books which i'm really excited about uh, it's it, great great resources there 
Uh, and also our Davis Select series, uh, where our, we offer some unique publications from, from Davis Art. So all of those three places would be uh, where, where I would recommend you go and check out if you're, if you're looking for additional resources. Thanks, Julian. Very we nice. really appreciate everyone taking the time to join us today. We hope you found this session helpful and we'll head over to davisart.com free resources to check out all of the great materials available to you. Thank you, everyone.